What's going on everybody? It's your boy Spencer and like I said I got another video for you guys on Friday today. Hopefully you guys are enjoying your Friday. This is the Fresh Start Friday, the second edition where I kind of have my backlog of duels, show you a full catalog of some of the stuff I have going on and hopefully you guys enjoy that. Uh, it's from all the decks that I've kind of shown you throughout the, the weeks and you know maybe I didn't make a full video about it because I didn't really think it was appropriate to have like two duels but hey let's check it out. First one I have for you guys here is DDDs. So DDDs have fairly good consistency, especially with this and where are thou, everything's basically a three of, so you don't have to worry about something like that. So there's two of the combo pieces and there's the third, so everything is in place and good to go. I think I mess up the combo, yeah, because I have two IQ points and I do put dark contract with the gate in a pendulum zone because I'm stupid let's see what I can do uh, with what I have here and yeah the beat then obviously the ban list came out and needle fiber survived which is pretty cool so yeah, look how cool I am not being able to put the stuff in the pendulum zone and finish my combo uh, he goes for lightning storm which is like what uh, so like even then it seems like I'm in a pretty rough spot, but Call by the Grave also put to one very recently, but that's all he had. He literally couldn't play anything else, but so let's see what I can do with this now. Yeah, and I'm able to synchro summon up into Borlo Savage Dragon, which is pretty cool. And also another negate. <laughs> so I, I was able to pivot, which I thought was uh, the most interesting part of this. And he just didn't draw anything else, too, obviously. But I thought that was a pretty decent recovery. So if you like DDDs, I guess it's not the end of the world if you mess up. So I'm able to search one of them and hope I get the other one. Oh, no, excuse me. I have Where Art Thou. So there you go. Full combo. And I think I do do it right this time, if I'm not mistaken. It's fairly common to get this. Even though you need four pieces, they're all so easy to get from each other. I showed you guys, and if you're interested in this and it's going too fast for you, I did do a, vid a video for DDDs, uh, which is, I think I called it like DDDs full combo explained step by step or something like that, which is really cool. And I think DDDs got it significantly better because of this ban list because not everyone can abuse Needle Fiber now like this, like this deck can, which is really neat. And there we go. That is full combo. I, th I think I do mess up somewhere along the lines. Oh, and this uh, Lost World, obviously, I, this is where I messed up. Formula Synchron shouldn't be in this Pendulum Zone. It should I should have put it here, I think, maybe. But in any case, um, I can go ahead and Satellite Warrior. I still have other negates to use, too. So, And I have to negate that. And since he realized he had nothing else, he couldn't. He literally couldn't attack over everything. Uh, then I kind of had the advantage. So that was against Dino. So once you get full combo, even if you mess it up like I did, it's you're in a pretty decent spot. Here is Egyptian Gods, which is one of my favorite decks. I can't wait for Rage of Raw, even though the full set has not been announced, which is just crazy to me. You guys know the Sangian combo that I love so much. And a window there is super good, along with a Neos Fusion. So that's a pretty darn good opening. Restricting his uh, special summoning for the churn. And I think he doesn't realize that until later. And then I also have that just crazy attack bear. So if he sets anything, then I'm like really good to go. I think he's trying to get his attack up to go over. Oh, wow. <laughs> That sucks to go perform a foul popper up to perform a popper up. I take damage. So I'm able to special summon my guardian slime, which is really neat. I'm able to protect this. I'm surprised he didn't go after Winda. And to draw uh, one of my raws is just a death sentence, honestly. But because I also have um, Blaze Cannon here, I want that Ghost Rare, and I'm able to just just because for the for the souse and because I'm unaffected by card effects. I just boost this guy up to 10,000 and, and uh, tribute both of those. I thought that was awesome. I love this Egyptian God deck. It's so fun. More like a raw deck, but you guys know. You guys know the deal. 
Here's Numeron Sky Striker. And like I said, guys, I am doing a deck profile for you later on this. It's a, it's budget, so it's not fully expensive. So get ready for that. Oh, this is the most interesting. This is the most interesting duel I think I've ever had in terms of like something you could have just never predicted ever. But we'll see what happens. So he goes for 10 Yees, which got a bunch of reprints. So if you're into 10 Yees, especially Appaloosa too. So this deck is really inexpensive now, which is neat. Oh, it sucks. If I had hit in Skill Drain, this duel would have been over a long time ago. But hey, what are you going to do? I wish I had Mega Clops, honestly. And I think Mega Plox, I, I don't know. The extra deck is really tight on the budget. Uh, if this wasn't budget, I would have like Appaloosa and stuff like that. So... C1 is honestly part of the budget side. I was hoping that the uh, when it's summoned, it just banishing isn't the effect. It's like the the condition. But he goes for surprisingly. I think this is what ends the duel for him. In a sense, is he hits Pot of Zyres a second time, and obviously that's negated. I'm just trying to put bodies on the floor, uh, and that's a effect from the hand, I guess. And uh, the reason I do go into the Synchro is to go uh, back into the extra deck and draw two and hopefully get something out of it, but... I had drawn the wrong one. I almost got to go into Crystal Wing Synchro Jack into basically in the game, but still... I'm in this weird spot where he like has these monsters and I don't know what to do about it. I'm just trying to survive at this point. <laughs> And now I have a shark cannon, which is online. It is online. So I'm able to provide events for myself. So at this point, I'm thinking, what, sh what should be my strategy here? Well, he has nine cards left. What can I do with that? So he goes into attack. I know I have at least another defensive thing, but he doesn't have another monster, so I can kind of chill on it for a while. So he's only down to seven cards, which is insane. So I have I have two ways to defend myself, so it depends. And I'm able, every time I get another monster, I'm just going to go ahead and chuck in face down position too. Every bit of protection can help me. I think he's kind of realizing that too. And I could do Numeron Calling here, but it's only if I need it at that point. I could put uh, Afterburners back. So this is kind of my emergency situation where I can pop like one of my face downs and then pop a monster if I ever need to, if he ever puts enough bodies on the floor. And I'm going to use as much defense as I possibly can, you know. I was really hoping I'd be able to like maybe pop that and face down, but I have 2,000 defense, which is enough. And he's able to banish his Vashuda, but I do have the defense necessary. I think he's going to be able to get 1,000 in here. Yeah, so it's coming really down to the wire. This is intense. I still have a Shark Cannon left, so I, I kind of have some form of it. And I go ahead and use that Afterburners on his, uh, his set, which is really honestly a silly move by him. Uh, so I'm able to pop his big monster, and, I, and if I can put enough defense on the f on the uh, on the field, then I'm good to go. Again, I stall that shark cannon, boom, and I take his uh, berserker of the ten Yi just in case he's able to bring it back somehow. But now I don't, I physically don't think he has a monster capable without effects to beat over him. That would be a straight shot if he's able to do it. This would be, you know, obviously all of these are just not enough, so. Maybe if he was able to link climb into three, he would have had a chance, but decked out. And I think, or he would have decked out, but instead he uh, went for the suicide route. Um, here's a few Raid Raptor duels, and Rusty Bardis just came off the ban list, which makes Raid Raptors significantly better. And you guys will see in just a second what Raid Raptors are able to do. Here is these Flower Guardians, what I see all the time now, which is crazy, but. So he wasn't even really able to do anything. Let's see what I'm able to do here. I'm always able to pivot pretty well. Rank up, and I think these are all 
one of them was special summon or maybe both yeah both of them were so i like blaze cannon i think it's definitely something um that you should be using and i do have one negate on the field and what i'm trying to think is that if he doesn't have any monsters on the field i'm able to kind of he's not able to continue so stopping that first uh summon is like really important and at this point i should be able to do something pretty good here Yeah, so once I have an Xyz monster, I'm able to go into Raid Raptor Y Strict. That's able to get me Zephyros. This is. I'm trying to think this is almost full combo, but able to go into the Samorg Link. To my, to my knowledge, I haven't um, restricted myself in any sense. I was hoping that I was going to be able to rank up there and finish the game off, but. You guys will see, as soon as the turn starts, I'm going to go ahead and rank up this uh, Dark Rebellion XZs into Requiem. So now I have, I don't know, three Monster Negates and one Omni Negate, which also just happens to Special Summon Blaze Cannon, which, sure. Um, and I'm just going to keep negating, so, I mean, there's nothing you can do about it at that point. Here's Raid Raptor versus Dark Magicians. And he's running uh, Chocolate... Magician Girl, just such a throwback for me personally. I'm able to go into Infinity here. Zephyros is able to get that back, which is decent enough. And I'm able to go to the Samorg Link. So if, if you don't have full combo, every once in a while, depending on what's your hand, you're able to pivot. This is a pretty strong board all in all. This, this alone is enough to just destroy him, in my opinion, because... Your power comes in summoning your Dark Magicians, obviously. So if you're not able to summon a Dark Magician, then what are you going to do? And now that I have my second again on the board, it's like, he's done for. Especially if he tries to go for Eternal Soul. I'm just going to negate that, destroy it, and, uh, you know, what is he going to do after that? Another circle, but at this point I would have summoned him back, had two negates on the board, and you guys know how it goes from there. I probably could have done this. Uh, actually, it's not a Raid Raptor monster, but... I would have had plenty of options. Here's Evil Twins. I know that they're the talk of the town right now. It's not really my cup of tea. I'm not <laughs> into the whole waifu deck thing. Um, but yeah. Uh, not the greatest opening for sure. But let's see what Evil Twins are able to do. It's just something I wanted to uh, highlight for you guys. Because I know eventually I may do it. But I, I don't know. I just don't really believe in it too much. People say it's like the Zodiac of Lynx. And I can... Definitely understand that that one turns into like all of them basically. Yeah, you didn't have enough attack to get over four strix, which is like a reason why I think the deck may not be very good. Anyways, I'm able to search. And that's enough to go into my Y strix, please. He pops my Y strix, which I don't know if that was the decision I would have made. And I go into the new cover card of Dark Rebellion XZ's Dragon. And this field spell is actually pretty good. It negates attacks. And I didn't realize that because reading is hard. Anyway, so I just have this 5,000 attack uh, beater on the field doing nothing, basically. Holding on to that Kaiji, which I think was the right decision. Let's see what he goes into. He goes into Cerberus. But uh, can't be destroyed by card effects, so that was a bit of a misplay by him, honestly. I kaiju his evil twin in the hopes of getting rid of it, but it just doesn't. Uh, let's see what I can do here. Go ahead. He like has all the answers for this duel, which is so annoying to me. But he's able to negate the attack. But now he doesn't have access to his evil twins, to my knowledge. They are shuffled back into the deck, but without a normal summon of it. I don't know exactly what you're going to do. Is able to get rid of my Rebellion, which is tough on me. So now we're in a bit of a stalling match. Uh, I have to survive this turn, so I go ahead and Lightning Storm here. And I don't actually know why he Special Summoned there. And now I'm like, okay, let's see if you how you can work without Special Summoning. He's <laughs> at one, you know, when in doubt, just try to stun your opponent, basically. 
and it's just, just going to become a beatdown deck, <laughs> which is kind of disgusting, but hey, you got to do what you got to do in Yu-Gi-Oh. It's a very grindy duel, and this makes things really tough on me because hand traps, for whatever reason, just have defense, man. So I'm 100 short. I'm like, all right, let me just go and do the Samori Link. He destroys it, but I'm still able to just special summon. So now I have a 2700 attack monster that is an Omni Negate. And stopping his normal summon, I think, is the right move, in my opinion, because he doesn't control an evil twin. And I got a Monster Reborn. That's just an insane top deck, honestly, guys. Uh, and I would have been able to normal summon something else. But even if I wasn't, actually, um, I would have been fine because I would have special summoned, like, a Mist Valley or something like that, and that would have been really game. Here's Raid Raptors versus Medulces. I tried Medulces once. I just it feels so linear. It's kind of like, oh man, I don't know. It just doesn't interest me that much. Combo again, as you guys probably know, is just not my cup of tea. I don't think I go into the Zexal route because I'm really trying. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to practice for Phantom Rage because I think Zexal will be banned. Although. At the very least, not until December, so take take that for what you will. So no special summoning plus a negate. Not bad, I suppose. I think he was trying to bait out my called by the grave, but yeah. Uh, not being able to special summon is just so bad. And I think you can actually use, yeah, typical tactical talents, which no one will be using at your locals. Hashtag LMAO. Uh, I get another negate on the board, and as long as I can get two two darks on the field, which I think I do right now, <laughs> uh, I can just go into like literally whatever I want. And last three duels for you guys are going to be Sacred Beast, and this is my this is the control version of Sacred Beast, which I really really like. Foolish Barrel is always good to get that third combo piece, which I was able to do here, luckily. And you guys know the deal. A great opening here. Especially with There Can Be Only One. It's such a blowout card, honestly, for a lot of decks. I'm able to draw two in the process as well. To replenish whatever resources I use. Two hand traps. There Can Be Only One. It's like, dude, what are you going to do, man? And he's probably going to go Red Eyes Fusion. I have an Ash Blossom for it. I basically have all the answers. And I think he's playing a hero deck, too. So I, there's nothing you can do about that. This, uh, this deck you're seeing is also a deck profile I did. I did the full powered one and the budget. So if you guys are interested in looking at this deck, uh, obviously I'm cross-promoting myself. But yeah, uh, keeping you guys on the channel is obviously pretty good for me. Has the double lightning storm. I, I have the called by the grave. Um, I'm fine with this. I don't know when will... I don't know if this card will ever be affordable. I think it'll always just kind of be too expensive for anyone's liking. But... Yeah, it's a great top deck, Dark Beckoning Beast, but there's lots of uh, great top decks. And he goes to banish this again. I'm sure he's running Maju, but, and he didn't actually banish it. It always amazes me. To be a skilled Maju player, in my opinion, you have to, um, <laughs> you have to, like, not be able to banish your Maju somehow. And that Al Mirage protects me from the Golden Gate of Strongburg, which is really cool. And this is the end of the duel, basically. So I was able to negate the effect. I don't even know if that mattered, but yeah. And just pass my turn. I don't even need to attack. Why bother? Uh, that was the end of the duel. Here's another duel, I think, against Dark Magicians. Yes, absolutely. And if you're interested in my Dark Magician build, I do run Shadals. Uh, I did the full power Dark, Mag Dark Magician Shadals and... Coming up next week, or sometime next week, maybe, or in a couple weeks, I'm going to be doing the budget version, which will feature Red Eyes Dragoon. That's my goal. Uh, I don't want any uh, shenanigans going around with... Uh, he doesn't even have access to Eternal Soul, but I don't know that. So he kind of opens this, like, ultimate thing. Like, he's he can't be beaten. So let's see if I'm able to get out of this jam, but... This is pure Dark Magicians, you know, where you run all the bricks and stuff like that. So so he gets his Eternal Soul, but I think I banished his one Dark Magician that he had access to, which is just always an inherent problem. And I knew where that was, so... I'm able to put a double uh, board up here. 
Yeah, and this is the Fusion version. I just remembered that. And uh, yeah, so the advantage is all mine right here. I'm able to draw two as well. And I'm setting myself up for next turn. Boom, see ya. There's all your cards and pieces, man. Uh, I think he, he doesn't whiff, but he has no access to his Dark Magician. So you guys know... Um, I, I I don't know how I feel about the fusion just yet, but I think it has a place somewhere. I just don't know where that is. And let's get that Gozen match out of there. It's always a problem for me. I think I tried to go into four, but I don't even know if I have fours. But still, uh, he, he has just no access to his stuff, and I banished a lot of his important combo pieces. So that was pretty cool. Uh, display of the fusion monster, which put in a ton of work. I think it he went like neg five. <laughs> Here's the last duel of the day, guys. Another Sacred Beast video. Sacred Beast Control is definitely one of them that I'll be taking to locals with me. I still wish Pot of Extravagance was a little cheaper because I want an extra copy. I just don't feel like spending 20 bucks on it. And let's see what I can get off the draw. I already have an effect failure, which is pretty cool. Uh, and I got the Ash and the effect failure, which is good interaction without a doubt. And look at, I mean, this is just insane, the amount of advantage I'm able to uh, to get. I think I, yeah, I went negative hard, but I have so much in my hand that it doesn't matter. He has summon limit, which does make things difficult, for sure. Which, he's running heroes, which is so confusing to me why he would play summon limit. I feel like it's going to hurt him more, but we'll see. As long as I can do this, and I, I think he's going to try to do mass change. Oh, never mind. So I'm just going to go ahead and negate that, because, like, why would you allow that? And at this point, the control is all mine, especially now I have Sacred Beast Awakening. It's just like, yeah, what are you going to do, man? You're not going to be able to get over this, to my knowledge. And any effects, like, I still have all these hand traps that I have amassed from all this advantage. I have all of this back. I can't be destroyed by card effects or targeted even. He destroys all my spells and traps. I'd never heard of Mass Hero Acid before, but hey, um, it, it, <laughs> I'm still able to do my thing. Boom, bada bing. Uh, I'm able to get, I mean, <laughs> in one turn I've gotten back and now I have, uh, you know, Black Luster Soldier banishes Mass Hero Acid. This is a really impressive duel, honestly, if you're into full-powered Sacred Beast. I think this is the best version of the deck, but... And I'm able to stick Kaiju because I have no idea what he has face down. There's no reason. And I'm there. So I, I have all the life points, all the advantage, all the hand traps. That was just a dominating duel, to be honest with you. Even after getting uh, Harpy Feather Dusted, or if you want to call it that. Uh, yeah, the little long-witted video today, but hey, you know, sometimes I'm also in the mood for just to, let me just put this in the background while I'm studying, or I'm just hanging out, and it's just cool to see what kind of different decks are out there. Uh, other than that, guys, I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day, and I'll see you next time.